Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Pang the Organizer. So today I have a special guest with me. You probably recognize him, Ivan LaCroix. How are you? Happy to be here, sir. Absolutely. So Ivan has over four decades in the car detailing industry. He is part owner with his business partner, Nick McGurk, of DIY Detail. They manufacture and distribute some amazing car detailing products. And he's here with me today. I'm going to be sharing my 26 plus years as well of detailing experience. So three quarters of a century, guys, for this awesome discussion about Yep, this glass bottle, ceramic coatings. So if you've been watching the channel, you know that ceramic coatings are my favorite form of paint protection compared to traditional carnauba waxes, which will last one to three months, or synthetic paint sealants, which will last three to six months maybe. Ceramic coatings in these glass vials can last for many years. But there are a lot of myths, misconceptions, and mistakes about ceramic coatings. So I'm going to put Ivan to the test today. I'm going to give him a few of these myths, and we're going to debunk them together uh, so you guys can better understand the technolo technology that's uh, behind these products, but also their limitations, right? So Ivan, let me dive straight into the topic. By the way, guys, if we discuss any products, I'll link them in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And you can also go have a look at the DIY Detail YouTube channel, by the way, uh, for more of their detailing tips and tricks using their products. So Ivan, myth number one. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Ceramic coatings are a magical force field that not only protects your paint, but it makes your vehicle invincible. What are your thoughts on that? Completely false. Okay. Uh, not even close to being true. Uh, ceramic coatings, they do a lot of things, but no, they're not gonna prevent rock chips. They're not gonna prevent scratching. Uh, they're not gonna prevent a lot of things. What they will help with is chemical etching. So bird, bird droppings, insects, yep. things like that. Yes. They make your car easier to clean. They make it more fun to drive. Clean car always drives better. Absolutely. So little things like that. But no, they're not a force field in any way, shape or form. Because you, you hear a lot of those companies out there, right, that do these claims that are outrageous. Yes. Uh, those are not the good companies, by the way, no. but who uh, fireproof. You're going to have scratch protection. You're going to have stone chip uh, protection and that kind of stuff. That's, yeah. again, not what ceramic coatings are meant to do. So when Ivan was talking about chemical resistance, so they traditionally have a different pH scale between one or the other. We'll talk on, about that later on. But traditionally, anywhere from pH 2 to 3 all the way up to pH 11 or 12, sometimes even more. So they have a broad range of resistant to chemical chemicals. They can protect your clear coat against tree sap, bird droppings, acid rain, uh, and things of that nature. Right. They can give you UV protection or to help at least that top part of your clear coat where the UV blockers are. Well, with adding a ceramic coating on top or a graphene coating, you can help boost that a bit more. It's going to help resist against the elements. It's going to make your washings, as you said, yeah. a lot easier. So that's one of the properties. When we say self-cleaning properties for coatings, you probably have heard that. It doesn't mean that the car washes itself, right? No, no. So it makes the cleanings a lot easier because your um, microfiber wash mitt or your wash pad, whatever you're using, is going to glide a lot easier on the surface. You're adding a bit of that slickness. Some of them can help to boost gloss a bit with a few additional gloss units. Although, guys, uh, and Ivan, you're a big proponent of proper polishing. Yes. Paint correction is what truly gives the biggest increase in gloss for your vehicle. So if somebody wants the ultimate shine and gloss, paint correction, well, removes not only those swirls, those scratches and oxidation, but it also flattens the surface to make it more true and flat. Hence, you're getting better light reflection and hence you're getting an increase in gloss and clarity. Exactly. So if people want the biggest boost in gloss, they, they should machine polish exactly. their paintwork. Okay, so that was myth number Number one, these are not magical force fields, but yes, they will last for years uh, if you take proper care of them. And we're going to talk about care in just a bit because it's not very complicated. No. So myth number two, Ivan, ceramic coatings uh, are not uh, only, um, they're they're not really durable against the elements. So they don't really offer protection against the elements. So what do you have to say against that? Yes, they do. Okay, they do. Uh, but not all ceramic coatings are created equal. Okay. And how you maintain your ceramic coating is more important necessarily than the ceramic coating itself that you're using. Yeah. So a good quality ceramic coating is going to last a long time. And yes, it is going to protect against the elements. They have a tendency to water spot a little more uh, because of that beautiful beading that we all like. Yes. Rain does not cause water spots. What causes water spots is a sprinkler. It's a hose. It's improper wash technique. So if you're getting water spots, look at your environment. It's not coming from the rain. 
So the minerals left from the water droplets, when the water evaporates, those minerals that are left behind, right. which are acidic in nature traditionally, they can start etching through the clear coat if they're left unattended. Yeah. So at least the ceramic protection is going to help protect your clear coat against that. But that doesn't mean you're going to leave your ceramic coating unattended, exactly. which leaves me to the next point, the myth number three. Uh, ceramic coatings eliminate the need for any type of maintenance. You don't have to wash your car anymore. You don't have to do any type of maintenance. What is your take on that? No, they require maintenance requires less maintenance than just raw clear coat. Yep. Uh, but you still need to clean your car. It's not, you know, it's not a force field. It's not self-cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. You still need to wash your car. Washing is going to be easier, but you still need to maintain it. And, you know, there's other points. So I won't dive too deep here because I know what else is coming. Okay. So, uh, well, then you were talking a bit about different types of ceramic coatings earlier on. Yeah. So myth number four, all ceramic coatings are created equal. They're all the same thing. It's the same liquid in a, just a different, perhaps glass bottle sometimes, but they're all equal. Is that true? No, very okay. false. Okay. Uh, one of the things that differentiates a ceramic coating is what's in it, first of all, in terms of ceramics. And a graphene coating is also a ceramic coating. So uh, some people will separate graphene from ceramic coatings. It's just another form of ceramic. Ceramic just means an inorganic matter. Yes. So. Uh, some coatings will have silicon dioxide or SiO2, which is the most popular or most yep. traditional. Uh, there's SIC, silicon carbide, there's polysilazane, which is a pre-polymer. And then we have uh, silicon nitride in some cases. We have diamonds in other cases. So a lot of different ceramic particles in there. What really differentiates coatings though is the carriers and how we bring it to the vehicle. Manufacturers that now make or that still make coatings that are difficult to apply, they need to go back to the lab. There's a lot of new chemicals available that we can make a ceramic coating that is easy to apply, but as durable as the most hard to apply coating. Yes. And you were talking about graphene being a ceramic coating. So graphene coatings are essentially a ceramic base in the formula. So the right. same type of ceramic. Yes. But they're adding some reduced graphene oxide or RGO right. into the mix. Exactly. And that's traditionally, from my understanding, is to help alleviate a bit of that water spotting issues. Exactly. Graphene is supposed to help with making those water spots not fully disappear, but at least make them easier to wash off during your maintenance cleanings. Exactly. And so... Uh, some of them initially, I think the confusion with viewers was that some uh, companies were claiming that they're reducing the surface temperature to fight off the mineral deposits, right? Right. With graphene. And I think that's not quite the case. Or what's your take on graphene, basically? So graphene, as Pan mentioned, it's specifically, you know, the reason we have it in a lot of formulas now is water spot resistance, not water spot proof, just water spot resistance. And other than that, there's no special properties. There's nothing spectacular about it it's not snake oil some people you know yeah. in the beginning it was <laughs> oh no graphene snake oil yeah uh and some manufacturers you know if we go back four or five years when graphene just was starting in the industry uh there's some manufacturers that said no graphene is snake oil it will never work and now they're selling a graphene coating yes uh, basically it's they were saying our chemist hasn't figured it out yet yeah, the same thing happened when ceramic coatings were first available, what, 10, 12 20. years at this, 20 years at this point. Yeah. So when they first started, people were calling them snake oils. You can't put a glass inside a bottle. What is that silica thing? Yes. Yeah. IO2. There was a lot of confusion. But with anything, when new technology comes forward, you got to let time to people to test it, try it. And now we all know today that they are the best form of pain protection. Exactly. So uh, myth number five, Ivan, ceramic coatings eliminate the need for waxing. So we often hear that you should should not wax a ceramic coating. What is your take on that? You don't need, you don't need to, to wax a ceramic coating, but you can. Uh, if you use a non-abrasive wax, yep. so wax has one big advantage. It doesn't last. So that's actually a good advantage if you're susceptible to water spots. So you unfortunately have to park close to a sprinkler, things like that. Wax your car. As that wax wears off the surface, it's bringing the minerals off the coating with it. So on a coating, a wax won't last as long. Yeah. Instead of getting two to three months out of it, you might get, you know, three to four weeks. Yes. But you're saving your coating. It's becoming a sacrificial layer for your coating, which is a sacrificial layer for your paint. But if you don't like the look of water spots, and face it, some of us like waxing cars. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's mm -hmm. therapeutic. Yeah. So go ahead, wax your car, even if it has a coating, but you don't need to. So to remove any confusion that there might be, 
because uh, you'll also hear me sometimes saying that I don't recommend waxes. No. Because first of all, although you can, yes, they'll last less because don't forget the coating is made to reject stuff that is not compatible with it. So it would eventually reject that top layer of a traditional wax or a uh, uh, synthetic paint sealant. That's right. why we use more compatible silica spray sealants or graphene spray sealants. But the other point is if you're using an inferior wax on top of your coating, you might be masking the superior properties of the coating that's underneath. Exactly. I kind of agree with that. Yeah. So the top layer that you're putting on top guys, you're getting the properties of whatever is the outermost layer. So yeah. if you're adding just a cheap five, $10 wax just for the fun of it, yeah, you can apply it. Nothing bad is going to happen to the coating. However, you're going to notice a diminishment or a diminishing return in the properties that are being lost from the superior coating that is underneath. So you have to keep that in mind. If you want to apply a wax, yeah. by all means, go ahead and do so. But you're not do really doing any benefit other than for yourself. Sometimes people just like that because it's a soothing experience. That is fine. But note that you might be altering the properties of the coating that's underneath. Definitely. That makes any sense? Yep. So uh, myth number six, Ivan, I absolutely love these uh, tips and tricks. By the way, if you like these two, uh, smash the thumbs up button. That really shows the support. And of course, subscribe to the channel to continue learning more about car detailing, all the tips, the tricks, product reviews, tool reviews, equipment, products, you name it, everything is gonna be here on the channel. So uh, myth number six, ceramic coatings cannot be removed and they can't be corrected. What do you so, think of that? They can be removed. Okay. It's very easy to remove a ceramic coating. Okay. Uh, bring out your polisher and in yeah, a couple minutes it's gone. So mechanical abrasion from the pad and the polishing compound. Right. Okay. So mechanical abrasion. The second part was? Uh, that they uh, cannot be corrected. So if oh. you have any light defects, you have like a light scratch uh, or a swirl or some marring perhaps. Yeah. Love marks we call them from washing and drying. Well, you're stuck with them and you cannot do anything to your coating. No, you can polish a coating. Okay. And if you're just using a light finishing polishing uh, polish with a very light pad, then yes, you can bring back that coating, eliminate some of those love marks, marring, things like that. And worst case scenario, as soon as you've polished a coating, it's now receptive for another layer of coating. Okay. So you can add a second layer of coating. People ask me, you know, how many layers do I need to put on of X coating? Well, put on one. And then if you want to put a second layer on, put it on in two or three years. Yes. So there's maybe a bit of confusion from viewers is, well, we said machine polishing with even just a light polish will remove the coating. Right. And now we're also saying that you can correct a bit of the light defects by doing machine polishing. Right. It seems counterintuitive, right? Well, the coating itself, in order to fully remove the coating, you need to remove two or three microns of paint. So we can enhance the coating and we can prepare it for another layer. So you don't need, necessarily need to remove 100% of the coating to add a second coating on top. Got you. That being said, if you absolutely want to remove it for some odd reason, then yes, you need to go a little more in depth with the machine polishing. Yes. But you can, you can remove it. And if a lot of people are concerned, the only reason they would remove their ceramic coating is because they're having body work done. Yes. They were in an accident, they're having the car repainted, in that case, if your body shop is following standard industry practices without a coating, it's going to be the same because they're sanding the surface to abrade it. Once you've sanded it, it's definitely gone. Absolutely. And or perhaps you're at the end of your coating's lifespan. Yep. And in order to fully strip off a coating, once again, just chemical stuff will not do it. There's no stripping shampoos that no. magically remove the coating. These are semi-permanent forms of paint protection. Yep. There's a reason for that. So machine polishing is what will really remove them. And there's some professional grade coatings even. You might have to go up to wet sanding, right? To remove those layers sometimes. Sometimes. Very rare. The cross link. Yeah. yeah. The, the super hardcore ones. Yeah. So what do you think? Also, there are some products out there uh, to correct some light marring or light scratches on an existing coating, things like Carpro Essence right, that fills. Plus, for yeah. example, not the regular Essence. So the Essence Plus is going to have some semi-permanent fillers that yeah. will come in and mask kind of whatever is on there exactly. without uh, having too much abrasives that will damage the coating. Exactly. Okay. No, that's a great product. There's you know other ones on the market, but Essence yeah. Plus is definitely known for that. And yeah, it's a great way of you know, bringing life back to your coat. Absolutely. So myth number seven, Ivan, yep. ceramic coatings cannot be decontaminated. So you cannot use iron removers. You can't use tar removers. You cannot clay the surface. So what is your take on decontaminating a ceramic coated car? You can, and you should. Uh, if you want to get the best experience from your ceramic coating, it's not going to get as contaminated as quickly as if you didn't have a ceramic coating, but once in a while, 
you'll feel it you'll you know when you're washing when you're drying or just touching the paint you'll feel that ah, it's a little contaminated yes you can chemically decontaminate it because they have a very wide resistance to chemicals so we'll say ph 3 to 12 is just about every coating yeah. some go down to one or two and some go up to 13. Uh, with that being said the mechanical decontamination there's a lot of differences there so if you're using a clay bar you might mar the surface because those are really abrasive right yeah. uh, if you're using a synthetic decontamination medium yep some of them with proper lubrication will absolutely not mar the paint in any way shape or form uh, so just know what you're using and make sure that it's properly lubricated yep. you're not applying pressure you're just removing the contamination but a chemical decontamination uh, you can use you know the old abc style system which was an acidic a basic solvent based so, okay and that will get rid of three different types of contamination so no problem with using iron removers obviously and no. that's actually recommended right every three to four months or depending on how much brake dust accumulation you have yeah you want to remove those orange rust spots those are, that's the brake dust so the iron particles embed themselves in the clear coat and with the contact with rain water oxygen they start rusting oxidizing so you want to remove those with iron removers right if you have any tar deposits if you've been out drag racing or doing all types of stuff or maybe you're just rolling on a fresh uh, asphalt on the road and there's some uh, tar deposits well you can attack locally those tar deposits with a tar remover right ceramic coatings can resist those no problem don't overdo it uh, but it, it's perfectly fine and Ivan you were right about the uh, chemical decon towels so for example DIY detail you have your synthetic perforated decontamination towel right which is basically a synthetic clay media that's applied on top of a microfiber backing uh, and the uh, there's the ultra clay towel as well from the rag company that works well there's a couple of them that are yep. either ultra fine or fine grade and I do use them to maintain a ceramic coated vehicle you can combine them as well with an iron remover sometimes not all iron removers but the DIY detail that's one of them that you can use as your clay lubricant so you're doing two steps in one you're removing the iron particles plus your claying but definitely you can and should be taking care of your uh, ceramic coated vehicle there is no problem as long as you're using common sense again the traditional clay bar those are actually abrasive contrary to clay decontamination towels which are non-abrasive so keep that in mind right you wouldn't that's why we say do not clay the surface because the manufacturers they don't know what the users will be using so if they knew about clay towels no problem but because they want to make sure that people don't do some mistakes that's why you're always going to hear don't clay your ceramic coated vehicle but that applies to a traditional uh Clay, clay bar. bar there you yeah. go so with synthetic clay media no problem and uh, you should be and that's how you're going to keep your coating uh, decontaminated and looking better for longer so you can also use for uh, decontamination what I like to do as well sometimes to remove a bit of that deeper grind traffic film or road film you're going to have the alkaline pH level snow foams that you can help to break a little bit of that deeper grind they actually do some cleaning contrary to just a pH neutral snow foam which is more for lubrication yeah you can also have some acidic shampoos now to remove mineral spot deposits kind of like what a mineral spot remover will do it changes the pH on top of the surface to remove those mineral deposits exactly so there's many many ways guys that you can decontaminate your car uh, that's ceramic coated but you can and you should so myth number eight Ivan the spray versions of coating so the spray coatings are exactly the same thing as in the glass bottle and you can just spray it on and you're going to get years and years of protection right they're the same thing aren't they months and months not years and years there you go so there are a lot of different spray coatings generally you'll see them advertised on uh, Facebook and you know multi-level marketing type things yeah uh there are some companies that produce a spray coating they're legitimate and yes. they're not telling you it's going to last for years they're telling you it's going to last maybe up to a year absolutely and one other thing just from a safety concern uh, i see a lot of detailers now they're getting into this uh, habit or this trend of taking a legitimate ceramic coating so a bottled ceramic coating put it in an hvlp sprayer and spraying it on the vehicle extremely extremely dangerous unless you are in a downdraft paint booth wearing full PPE including the ventilated mask do yes. not spray a coating they're for the most part fluorinated and fluorination look it up it is not good for your body <laughs> and yes I see a lot of them they're wearing a little respirator the traditional one yeah and gloves 
but short sleeve shirt and they're spraying and it's getting on their skin. Yep. Your skin absorbs more than your lungs do. Absolutely. So that's that's not a good way to do things. No. The way I see spray coatings as well is yes, they're they're legitimate out there for sure. You guys have some right. in your lineup. Uh, there's things like Gion Canco Evo, which can last six to 12 months. There, there's a lot of good ones out yeah. there. Um, but I see them as sort of, you always have to pick what your needs are, right? So if you have a lower budget, spray coating could be the thing for you. You might not want something that lasts many, many years because you like to change and try different stuff. Spray coating can be for you. You want something that is a lot quicker, a lot easier to apply. And that is basically, you don't need any true instructions. A spray coating might be for you. But know that, of course, they have their limitations as well. If you have the time, if you have a bit more experience, although we're going to touch on that because they're not that complicated to apply. No. The glass bottle variants today, they did a, a big progress with these glass bottle variants. So if you want longer durability, you want better chemical resistance, you want something that's going to be there for a few years and you want that ultimate performance, then the glass bottle variants are the ones for you. I would be using the spray versions more as maintenance for those glass bottle coatings. Or if you just want a standalone and you want something quick and easy, then there's the spray as well. But they are not identical. They're not the same formulation no. inside the bottles and they, that they just magically put in spray form. Two completely different types of products, guys. Yeah. So always keep that in mind. It goes according to your needs and your budget. Yeah. And there's one use that I find really interesting for those. Okay. That is wheels, grills, yes, yes, uh, and wheel wells. So, as you're washing your car, spraying a little bit on the wheel, a little bit on the grill, yep. it's going to keep it topped up. It's going to keep it done, especially if you have those really complicated and intricate grills yes. that to coat would take a day. Yes. In the traditional manner, it's just a, a great way of using those products. And uh, one cool thing that has like really, really started picking up in the past few years are those spray on rinse off either ceramic or graphene based sealants. Yep. Uh, like, well, DIY detail, you have the um, quick, uh, beads. quick beads and there's things like Gion Canco, there's Card Pro Hydro 2, there's there's a bunch of them on the market, McKee's Hydro Blue yep. uh, and so on and so forth. So those products are super simple to apply and they'll give you more than that month of protection. Some of them can go three, four, six plus months. So you spray on the wet surface you rinse off and that's it so it's very easy to top off the protection on your wheels to access intricate areas as you were saying with the grills the complicated designs and the areas that are difficult to access in today's modern vehicle designs so yeah there there's a lot of stuff available out there uh, not only in spray form but in the bottles in spray and rinse so there's different types depending on what your needs are so uh, let's talk about the next myth myth number nine ceramic coatings are very difficult to apply and they should only be applied by professional certified detailers is that true yes and no okay uh, i recently did a training and this uh shop was using a x brand of coating i've never run across a coating so difficult to apply okay to apply to a car the size of yours yeah it was a four to six hour job ouch of hard, really hard labor. There are coatings on the market that makes wax seem difficult to apply. So there's a real gambit there. But most of the good, um, you know, available coatings to the do-it-yourselfer. Let's call it consumer grade. Yeah, yeah. consumer grade coatings. Yep. They're super easy to apply. And mm -hmm. if you have one that's not easy to apply, maybe look at something else. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think they've done a lot of progress in the chemistry world in the yes. past, I'd say five to six years now. Because coatings initially, yes, they were tacky. They were hard to remove. You were worrying about water, um, the high spots right. and flashing times and you were going nuts. So I understand why a lot of DIYers or enthusiasts would leave that to the professionals because sometimes you needed infrared curing lamps, complicated equipment. But the uh, consumer grade coatings guys, and a lot of them now only require one layer these days. So yes. they're, they're very simple. They're not time consuming. Uh, mm -hmm. There is, they give you usually visual indicators, whether it's some sweating on the surface, kind of that beating, the water molecules, the um, uh, solvent. The solvent carriers yeah, are splitting or separating, or you have the rainbowing, kind of an oil slick on water appearance. So there's some, or some of them haze. So it depends on um, which coating you're using, but you're going to have some sort of a visual indicator when it's time to start leveling your coating with the first towel and then buffing it off. But if you've waxed the vehicle before, the uh, especially if you're looking at DIY detail, for example, they have, we're going to talk about those later on, but they have three different types of coatings in their lineup and they are all made to be applied by people at home. Professionals can use them as well, no problem, but these are meant for DIYers, car enthusiasts, or professionals who want something simple and you're still getting all the benefits of the coatings like you used to have before. Actually, the technology has gone yeah. even better now, but they are not complicated. When you hear that some are only made for professional detailers because there are pro-grade coatings out there, it means that the detailer went through kind of a 
certification process with the brand, right. have an understanding of exactly how to apply so the warranty can be applied and also they're getting the best performance out of it because sometimes some of them can be a bit more complicated to apply. Definitely. So that's why there's pro grade and there's consumer grade, but if you're buying consumer, you shouldn't be worrying. So does that yeah. make any sense? Perfect. Fantastic. So let's move on to uh, myth uh, number 10. Ceramic coatings um, should cannot be applied in direct sunlight. You cannot apply ceramic coatings outside. You can't. Okay. Not all ceramic coatings are adaptable to that, yep. but some are. Uh, again, you know, advancements in technology have allowed us to have carriers that they're easy to work with. Uh, so even in direct sunlight, yeah, you might have to work a little faster, smaller area, but you can get it done. The other thing is with the, you know, working outside, always rain. So it yes. used to be you had to wait 8, 24, 72 hours before getting the car wet. Uh, there are a lot of coatings on the market now that one hour, you can get it wet. Absolutely. And what I would add to that is for the best user experience, guys, of course, try to avoid working in direct sunlight. Work in the shade on a cool surface or in a garage, a well-ventilated space, uh, yep. if possible, and in a controlled environment. Why? 68 Fahrenheit or room temperature, roughly 20 degrees Celsius, 40 to 45 percent humidity. Those are the optimal conditions. I understand not everybody has the opportunity like me to work in a controlled environment. So, yes, you can apply them outside. Don't forget, mobile detailers, they have a, a job to do and they'd be out of business if they couldn't work outside. Exactly. Yeah. So, of course, they have tips and tricks that they use to try and either have canopies or figure out the time of day as well try to avoid the noon hours when the sun is at its brightest and hottest they'll either code at the end of the day or perhaps at the beginning of the day but just use common sense try to avoid direct sunlight as much as possible and note that in hotter and more humid environments your coating is going to flash a lot quicker and in more colder environments with lower temperatures that the flashing time is going to be a lot longer exactly so as long as you're aware of those environmental differences you can still apply a coating outside absolutely what do you have to say about those who worry about the dust if i'm applying a coating outside am i rubbing the dust on the surface am i creating scratches or swirls you can coat panel by panel if you have to so if you are in a dusty environment uh your panel prep stage do it panel by panel yep. apply the coating panel by panel in this you know the 30 seconds to two minutes that it takes you to do that panel you're not going to get that much dust on it the microfiber towel actually absorbs it so you're preventing from putting pressure on the panel. Yes. And as soon as you've done that buff off or the, you know, the glossing of the, the coating to remove the carrier solvents, yep. you could put it in a dust storm if you wanted to. It's not going to stick to the coating. Exactly. So once that coating is level and buffed, you're you're good to go. Do not worry. Yeah. Of course, try to not apply it if you're in that dust storm. Yeah, so exactly. That dust yeah. whirlwind is spraying around you. Well, maybe that's not the best time to start coating. Right. But the rest of the time, don't worry about it. If you're working outside, it's it's a non-issue, right? Yeah. Ask your neighbor not to cut the lawn. Exactly. So myth number eleven, Ivan: a ceramic coated vehicle should only be cleaned or washed with a pH neutral car shampoo. Is that a myth? Completely false. Completely false. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a myth. Uh, you, know, you have on one hand coating manufacturers saying our coating will resist from a pH of 2 to 12. This whole scale of pH, yeah. Right. Why do I need to use a pH 7 soap if your coating is resisting from 2 to 12? Yes. It's sort of a, an oxymoron there. Absolutely. Uh, so definitely you don't need to use a ceramic special soap. You don't need to use a pH neutral soap. You can go a little acidic or a little caustic depending on what sort of contamination or yes. what issues you're having with your vehicle. But no, don't go out and buy a special soap just for the ceramic coating. So what I like to add to that is, like we said before, right, there are some alkaline pH snow foams or shampoos that will help with some type of grime or traffic film, road film, however you want to call it. There are some acidic ones that can help with mineral deposits, acidic deposits, um, uh, rain water, that kind of stuff, acidic rain. So there are different pH chemicals. So what I would tell you though is make sure that you have first of all a quality coating from a reputable manufacturer look at their pH range so obviously if your coating for example only protects up to pH 10 don't make it on purpose to use a pH 13 snow foam because repeated use of that can eventually weaken and could potentially damage the coating exactly so we're not saying to never ever think about not using those chemicals you can just use common sense traditionally yes coatings have a wide range of pH chemical resistance so 
use uh, your, your common sense once again. And yes, you can use the alkaline or the acidic, but maybe not on a, if you wash your car like me twice weekly, I don't need an acidic shampoo every wash. That's no. when I'll just bust out the pH neutral snow foam and exactly. pH neutral shampoo. That is yeah. fine. Another thing you might hear is do not use, use a wax free shampoo. So again, it's not the end of the world if you do, no. but just note that that little carnauba that's injected inside that shampoo is gonna lay on top of your coating and is gonna mask the properties of the better performing coating underneath. So that's why we say try to avoid wax infused shampoos and use either ceramic infused shampoos if you wanna do a two in one wash and protect at the same time, yeah. or just a regular uh, pH neutral car shampoo you're fine but again if you need to use those alkaline or acidic um, pH style snow foams or shampoos no issues uh, just make sure you have a good coating on your vehicle that it's in good health and you're not overdoing it with those chemicals so don't spray a pH 13 twice weekly on your car for five years yes the coating will probably not make it through right, right in its lifespan right and the other thing that uh, especially caustic chemicals so pH of 10 and up yes they will actually scar the coating but it's very temporary so you'll scar the you'll you'll put it on the vehicle you'll rinse it off and then, ooh the beating's gone down put it in the sun for an hour wash it again yeah. and oh the beating's back cuz you've just chemically scarred the surface but they do for lack of a better term self heal from that and what do you think of an APC pretreat on a ceramic coated car before you do the wash process? Because I like to do a snow foam, but some people like to pretreat with an APC. What is your take on using an alkaline chemical as a pretreat? Right. On so either the, the snow foam that you're mentioning or a good quality APC. Uh, don't use super clean and things like that. They're, yeah. they're degreasers. Don't use degreasers. Yeah, very powerful degreasers. Right. Yeah. But a good quality APC or a good quality pre-foam like that, not a damaging thing. You don't need to use it every time. There you go. You don't need to. And uh, the DIY detail, by the way, your all clean, which is your APC, diluted yeah. one to fifteen, I think, in, yes. the, in the bottle. Yeah. Uh, that one's perfectly fine. Once in a while, if they have some yeah, exactly. or bugs or things they want to remove, yeah. no issues. So um, myth number twelve, Ivan, you shouldn't use an automatic car wash if you have a ceramic coated vehicle. So what is your take on that? You shouldn't, but you can. Uh, See, th there's always a nuance. Okay. Yeah. Explain. Well. The automatic car wash, first of all, it never cleans as well as you do at home. Secondly, there's brushes. There's all sorts of things going on. Now, I took my personal car as an experiment through 74 brush car washes in six months. <laughs> and I travel around a lot. And when I'd go to a, a detailer shop, I'd, I'd ask, what's the worst car wash in town? That's the one I wanted to go to. Okay. Yes, at the end of the, the six months or the 74 washes, actually 70 brush washes, four chemical washes, but the coating was damaged slightly, but the vehicle was coated one panel with the coating, the next panel without, the next panel with, the next panel without. There was a marked difference between where it was coated, where it wasn't. And some people have different reasons for a ceramic coating. As detailers, we want gloss, we want that slickness, we want that, that candied look to yes. the vehicle. Yes. To the average consumer, and especially if you're a, a detailing business owner, this is important. For the average consumer, when they're looking at a coating, they want ease of maintenance. They want, I don't have to wash my car as often. Yes, they want the shine, the gloss, and all that. They can still take it through a car wash. Yes, it's going to damage the coating. It's going to scratch it up, but it's going to be a lot less damage, a lot less scratching than had you not coated the vehicle. So I would say like to, of course, enthusiasts out there, people watching these videos, yeah. try to avoid the automatic car washes. And the best way, if you're asking us, well, wash your car at home. Either use a proper rinseless wash method or the two bucket wash, three bucket wash, 15, one bucket, whatever you guys use yeah. with traditional car shampoos, uh, you're gonna have a better result because you're doing it by hand. So your all the intricate spots will be actually cleaned. You're not gonna be using harsh chemicals because don't forget those automated car washes, they're often using very high alkaline pH shampoos and repeated use once again, can weaken or perhaps even scar or damage the coating over repeated use. Yeah. Now there are some people out there who don't have the time, the energy uh, or the products or equipment at home to take care of their stuff and they don't care about durability. So they'll still get a few years out of the coating. Let's say it's a five year coating. Maybe they won't get up to five years, but they don't mind if it lasts two or three and they still want to use the automated car wash. Who exactly. Them? Who are we to stop them? It's better that at least they have the car cleaned than leave all that dirt, grime, contamination on the surface and not do anything about it. As long as you're aware 
aware that you can diminish the life of your coating by going through those automated car washes. Exactly. Now, the touchless ones are one thing, but there's other ones, especially back in the day with those nylon bristle rollers. Don't forget that they're rolling at high speeds. You're grinding that dirt on the surface at very high impact on your clear coat. So you're going to create not only marring, but scratches, swirls, and that mechanical abrasion, once again, can eventually wear your coating much quicker than you think. Yes, there are some new style rollers. I've heard that they're using some foam the technology neoprene. now neoprene so it can be not as damageable but still there's mechanical friction and abrasion think about a glass coating when you have them the more you use your wipers well that friction from the wiper blades eventually will uh, diminish the coating's durability so you have to manage your wipers when you have a glass coating water just sheets off and beads off very quickly so you don't have to use your wipers as much so keep that in mind you can use the automated car wash if you want just there can be some consequences over the long term and repeated uses the best way is to wash your car at home yourself exactly and it's fun it, it, absolutely that's the whole point of this channel is, yeah. is making detailing fun go out there uh, have a relaxing soothing moment with your vehicle take the time you need and you'll have a much better result as well a lot of people report that when they do automated car washes over the long run their paintwork looks dull there's a reason for that the gloss right. is not there anymore so the chemistry and the stuff they're using to wash your car is not optimal guys it's made to quickly remove a lot of that dirt and grime for the person that only has two to three minutes to go through that tunnel wash right so imagine the quality that you're getting oh, it might not be too much right so the next uh, myth uh, ivan that we have here is myth number 13 the paint has to be perfectly polished before you apply a ceramic coating so it has to be free of any defects it has to be perfectly glossy you run your inspection light on it and it's a1 quality museum level what do you think about that definitely a myth okay and that is one that was actually propagated by certain coating manufacturers yes when coatings came out 20 years ago and they started to be popular about 15 years ago some manufacturers thought that their name was on the car for some reason so you used brand x of coating then all of a sudden that card becomes representative of that company yes and it's the companies that said to the detailers if you're putting a coating on the car it needs to be perfect well that was for their ego has nothing to do with the coating has nothing to do with the paint yeah. has nothing to do with the owner of the vehicle if the owner of the vehicle says my car is perfect to me i don't want it i don't need it to be better than that the coating or the surface just needs to be clean to apply coating. It doesn't need to be perfect. There you go. So it has to be decontaminated, right? So you're still going to go through the motions of washing the vehicle. You're going to want to do an eye remover stage if uh, your paint hasn't been clayed in a while and it feels rough on the surface when you're running your fingers and you feel that contamination or a gritty surface. You're going to want to do a clay stage to remove the embedded particles or contamination. Then you're going to at least want to do an IPA prep or a paint prep spray to remove any potential older waxes or sealants that might be on there or uh, any other residual stuff that might be on the paint. Uh, basically, what you want to do is get your paint as squeaky clean as possible. So clean, yes. Decontaminated, yes. But having swirls or scratches won't prevent the coating from bonding on the clear coat. What will prevent a coating from bonding on the clear coat is if there's any leftover protection on the surface. For example, let's say you applied a fresh wax or a fresh paint sealant last week. Chemicals alone, even an IPA, will not fully strip that no. away. That's where the machine polishing will come in because me mechanical abrasion will strip off that previous protection because stripping shampoos as well, we hear that, right? You only need that to remove uh, waxes and sealants. No, stripping shampoos on their own can perhaps uh, remove or weaken the older waxes and sealants that have been there for a few months on the car, but a freshly applied wax or a freshly applied paint sealant, a uh, stripping shampoo alone will not remove that. It can only start the breaking down process. Mechanical abrasion from the pad and polishing compound is what will truly remove any previous protection. So if you're sure that your vehicle has zero protection on it, there's right. no water beating, there's, the sheeting is very slow and you've never applied any protection, well, at least go through the washing decontaminating steps. And if the paint looks good to you, you, you can skip machine polishing. I know people are sometimes don't, uh, they're, they're scared of doing paint correction. Right. You don't have to do it, guys, before you apply a coating. A coating will bond to a virgin clear coat. It doesn't care if there are scratches or swirls. That's for you, because if there are scratches or swirls, are you okay with the appearance of your paint? Well, if you are, well, at least protect it. You're going to get the benefits of the coating as well, even if your paint is not perfectly fine. Exactly. And one little side myth. To yes. This. Dawn dish soap does not remove waxes, sealants, no. or coatings. Uh, if you remember the ads from the 70s, well, 80s in your case, or 90s, yes. uh, it has a sheeting action. 
So you don't want water spots on your dishes. That beautiful wine glass, you don't want water spots on it. So when you take it out of that dish soap, it sheets it off. It prevents beading. So no, it's not taking anything off. It's actually leaving a layer a that film. prevents beading. There you go. So uh, another tip from the man himself. So yeah, once again, it, it really depends on what you want. Note that as we said at the beginning of this video though, if you want the biggest increase in gloss and reflection and clarity, of course the coatings will boost that a bit, but the majority of that comes from paint correction. Again, don't forget, if you look at paint through a close-up, you're gonna see that the clear coat has hills and valleys, right? It's not a perfectly flat surface. No. So those hills and valleys, when they accumulate scratches and swirls, the way they reflect the light, it's bouncing in all directions and that's why especially a black car in direct sunlight we've all seen that right those swirls are super apparent so that does not prevent the coating from bonding however it does prevent the light from reflecting properly so when you're making that surface as truer and flatter as possible you're getting better light reflection you're getting that pop that gloss that depth in the finish as well and then you're going to apply the coating so again it's a question of personal preference if you do not want to paint correct your paint before applying the coating no problem but at least make sure that you're cleaning and decontaminating so that surface has to has to be virgin for the coating to bond properly to do its job and to last for many many years exactly so the uh, next myth ivan myth number 14 uh, if your ceramic coating stops beating water it means it is dead that's the visual indicator that it is the end of your coating is no that true not true at all okay the coating is probably still there it's just contaminated and those of us that live in a northern climate we have uh, salt on the roads in the winter yep that is the biggest killer of coatings yes but a little mineral deposit remover a water spot remover on the surface and whoa it's back yes so basically your coating is shielded or it's hidden behind a layer that you don't see remove the contamination, the coating is back. Yeah, we call that masking. So don't forget all that contamination, it sits on top of the coating. So the coating is doing its job by protecting your clear coat against those uh, debris or that contamination. So that stuff sits on the surface, but it can clog, as we say, the pores of the coating. So you're not seeing the properties anymore. So now, of course, we're assuming that your coating is still, is still well within its lifespan. Obviously, if you have a five-year coating and you're at the end of that fourth year and there's no more water beating, chances are the coating is near the end so that makes sense but if you have a five-year coating you're six months into it and it's not beating assuming the coating was properly the paint was properly prepped and you applied the coating correctly it should still perform so the most the majority of the time what i see is just because it's clogged it can be uh some oily film traffic film road film it can be some contamination some mineral deposits again like i've been said in northern climates they use calcium chloride magnesium chloride on the roads so all that salt gets stuck on top of that surface and you're not seeing the water beating and Anymore. But when you're using those mineral uh, water spot deposit removers, uh, whatever spray, or you're using some decontamination as well on the surface, you're doing the decon wash, that's what we call that. Well, you're going to restore the hydrophobic properties on your coating. And there we go. It magically reappears. People think it's yeah. magic, but no, it's just because it was masked by whatever dirt and grime was on top of there. Right. The water spot remover does not have any waxes, sealants, or no. chemicals in them. Exactly. And, and sometimes we hear in the industry, they call the water spot removers the revivers of coatings. Right. Again, because they're unclogging the coatings from those mineral deposits. That's all it's doing. And also, don't forget, it is important, as we said before, to take care of your coating because those mineral deposits, if we're talking about minerals like water spots or the salts used on the roads, if left unattended for long periods of time and they bake in the hot sun eventually, those acidic-natured contents, they're going to start etching through the clear coat. Now, if you take care of them quickly, no problem. But if you let them over a long period of time, they're not only going to cause permanent damage, but sometimes only wet sanding will remove them and they can get to a point where you're going to need to do a full panel respray right yeah and the other thing is if your water at home has high tds or total dissolved solvents yep. or uh, solid sorry uh or high mineral content yep it's clogging the coating every time you're washing the car so yes. once in a while a little reset with the uh, mineral deposit remover, yep, and you're good to go. Or if you don't want any issues, say for example, you know you have hard water, right? Over 450 ppm where you live. Yeah. There's a lot of people, unfortunately, with hard water issues. There are solutions that you can have, like in my garage, I have a water deionizer, so I have zero particles per million of minerals. The water is as pure as it gets, so it's a spot-free wash experience. Yep. So you wash your vehicle, you rinse it out. I could technically leave the car dry in the sun, and there's gonna be no water spotting because there's no minerals in the water. So there are 
tips and tricks around that. But if you don't have a water deionizer, just frequent washing to remove those water spots. Use a quick detail spray or a drying aid when you're drying, not only for lubrication to add gloss and slickness, but also it's going to help prevent water spotting from happening when you're towel drying your vehicle. Exactly. So be, be diligent and use the proper washing and drying methods and you should be um, good to go. So uh, the uh, myth number 15, Ivan, ceramic coatings uh, can last forever on the shelf, right? They're in the bottle. You can just set it and forget it. I hear that sometimes from viewers. I bought a coating five years ago. Is it still good to go? Yes and no. So forever, no. Uh, but you have a lot of variables that will determine the durability of the coating. First of all, what kind of container is it in? So if it's in a glass bottle, there's a chance that it has a one-year life, shelf life. Yes. Uh, we actually put ours in an aluminum bottle for a reason. The aluminum oh, doesn't allow any light in. So that is keeping one of the aspects away. So even a, a dark bottle still lets a little bit of light in. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, if your coating bottle is full, it's going to last longer than if you use half of it. As soon as you put oxygen in that bottle... It starts curing. It starts curing, exactly. It oxidizes. The final thing you can do... so. You bought a coating, you only used half the bottle in your car, and you don't intend on coating anything else for a year or two or three. Use propane. And this is something painters have always done as well, is propane is heavier than air. Propane is also inert, so any inert gas. But basically, open your bottle, spray the propane in there, don't light it, just the propane, and it will displace the oxygen and the air inside the bottle, cap it, and now your coating is going to last longer. So once open though, a lot of manufacturers say one to two months, it's, it's an unknown kind of territory. Right. What's your take on once you crack the bottle open, how long do you have with that? What temperature are you storing it in? Yeah. Uh, is it in a dark cabinet? Is it frozen? Is it overheated? There's too many variables to give a specific, a specific. number. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not going to be three months, 16 days, five hours, and 22 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, no. So as a rule of thumb, once opened, a few months, guys, but you are you're, don't extend that too much. And for the DIYer that doesn't want to play with propane and all that yeah. stuff, what chemical manufacturers usually say, a ceramic coating that is unopened, so new out of the bottle, roughly about a year right. on a shelf in stable conditions. So never frozen and keep your either room temperature or anything above 10 degrees Celsius, or is that 50 degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah. Close to. Uh, so you want to keep it in stable conditions, and then it'll last about a year. Some can go up to two years. Some even have expiry dates on the bottles themselves. Just inform yourself with the manufacturer if your bottle, you haven't opened it and you haven't used it in a while, is it still good to go? Because you don't want to have a coating that you're applying, you're, you're spending all that time doing things right and all of a sudden you had a bad batch or a batch that was like six years old and that in the bottle itself, the chemicals, they have a limited lifespan before they're applied. So they're in liquid form with carriers and solvents and they want to be applied on a clear coat. And they even on a clear coat, they have a limited lifespan, right? It's not forever. So you want to make sure that you follow the instructions. And uh, Ivan, I think we debunked a lot of myths. Um, I want yep. to touch on the coatings that you guys have, by the way. Yep. Quick disclaimer, it's not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video. No. Just having Ivan here to share some thoughts. So we have the three coatings that you guys offer over at DIY Detail. Yep. And what I noticed in some questions from viewers is we have a graphene, a three-year coating. We have a five-year ceramic coating and we have a eight-year ceramic coating. So to remove any confusion other than they are all simple to apply, by the way. Yeah. So what are the key differences for somebody who's looking like, well, how do I know which one is right for me? What are the differences between the three, the five, and the eight year? So the numbers or the, the years are the characteristics of the coating. They're actually all, and like most coatings on the market, lifetime coatings if they're well-maintained. That being said, graphene coating, graphene as we've seen, has a matrix that forms in it, the graphene oxide, that matrix, after three years or so, breaks down through fracturing. What breaks down the coating the most other than chemicals is, and abrasion obviously, is fracturing. Okay. So hot and cold cycles. Those hot and cold cycles are going to break down the coating and eventually make it useless. It's still there, but it's not performing as well. And the graphene aspect of it, after about three years, that graphene matrix is broken down. You don't have that characteristic anymore. The five years are high gloss coating. Again, hand wash it at home, do a good job of hand washing, and you're gonna keep that gloss, you're gonna maintain that gloss for five years or so. The eight year coating is more of our self-cleaning. Uh, you don't love cleaning your car every week, 
uh, you want to keep the car a long time, that's where the eight-year coating comes in. So they're all, what is your main, if you had to share some tips and tricks for the application, is there any difference in the way you're applying these coatings on the surface? No. So what is the best way to apply the DIY detail coatings? It comes with an applicator. Okay. Uh, put it on, to clean the vehicle, all that. So I think it's a foam one, right? Yeah, round foam. There we go. Uh, comes with the applicator. You don't have to hold on to it. It holds on to you. The other thing with the foam, it uses a lot less than a microfiber applicator, so more efficient. But basically, get it on the paint. Make sure you don't have any high spots. So wait anywhere from one to five minutes, depending on the temperature, humidity, and just look at it. It forms what looks like an oil slick on water. And when 50% of that oil slick on water has gone away, you take a short nap towel, level it. Then you take a secondary towel just to make sure, because the first towel should never get wet. It's not removing any coating. It's just leveling the spreading surface. the high spots. Yeah. Then with the final towel, you're just making sure you don't have any high spots. A uh, typical vehicle, you're looking, you know, if you're used to doing it, it's 15 to 20 minutes. Someone who's never done it before it might take up to an hour. Take your time, enjoy. It's not difficult. It's not, uh, it's not irreversible either. So if you do have a high spot, it can be taken care of many different ways. Yeah, what's an easy way? Let's say a person is applying it an hour later, they see a, a, like a high spot on their paint, they're inspecting it, and oh my God, right. what, what would you do then? If you have a high spot, within a, an hour or two, just reapply some coating to it, level it off. So reactivating what's on the surface already exactly. and immediately level it off. Yeah. And if it's gone past that, so you notice it a week later, two weeks later, just give it a little hand polish uh, with a microfiber and just polish for a couple seconds, level it off, look at it. Oh, you see it's diminished a little bit yep. and keep diminishing it till it's gone. You don't need to reapply coating. You haven't removed the coating. You removed the excess coating, the high spot. One other thing that can cause high spots uh, with our coating, with a lot of other coatings as well, is over application. Yes. So if you're putting it on, you put way too much on, you've leveled it, it looks good. In an hour or so, as the solvents keep coming out of it, a high spot will appear and another one and another one and another one. That's because you put too much on. Too much is not better. Yeah. Basically, you just need to get it on the paint, spread it out as far as you can. As long as you're leaving a little snail trail behind the applicator, you're good to go. You don't need to douse the paint and, you know. And over apply. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people have the tendency to think they have to lay down a thick layer. There's no. so much that will bond to the clear coat. The rest is just excess that you're removing and wasting anyways. Right. So you just want that base layer to be on there. Is there a, what's the curing time? Once people are done before they expose their water to vehicle or rain out there? One hour. That is it. So traditionally we hear 24 hours for coatings. So what's special about yours that makes it only an hour? Uh, the solvent carriers, first of all, okay. uh, like I said, technology has changed dramatically. So yes, you can expose it to water within an hour. Uh, we tell you not to wash it for seven days. There's two reasons for that. First of all, surfactants. Yes. So if you have surfactants, whether it's a soap, whether it's a rinseless, even a polymer rinseless, you don't want to be washing it for the first seven days. The first two or three days are actually for the chemical aspect of it. The other ones are for the abrasion. So even though we're washing, we have the gentlest media possible, we're still moving something along that paint and we can scar the coating at that yes. point. So, but inversely, you have a bird that decides that they really like your car and want to leave you a present. <laughs> you have insects that have decided to commit suicide on the front end of your vehicle. Yeah. Wash those off. Yes. It's better to get that off. You know, the consequences are different. And when you say wash, you don't have to, you don't use a detergent. You can use something like the DIY rinseless wash. A rinseless wash, yeah. Spray uh, that even, on. A, even a waterless wash for yep. that matter will do yep. the job. You can use that. This is when the pH neutral soap comes in. So your pH neutral soap, you can use it then, but don't wash the whole car. Just no. wash the affected area. The less you touch your coating in that first week, the better it's going to be. What I usually tell my audience is don't take a chance. Wait two full weeks, guys. Don't rush it because coatings continue to cure, right? Even though that initial crust on top will feel like it's hardened, right. the coating underneath, it takes time and it takes days and days before it reaches its full hardness potential. That's why you'll also see many coatings, yours included, the gloss actually increases Improves, yeah. over the day. So even if the first day looks, wow, it looks amazing. Believe me, it's going to look even better a few days after. Yeah. Uh, and if you can also leave your car sometimes in the baking sun, that's when the sun 
sunlight will be your friend yep. and will accelerate that curing process. But wait two weeks for that detergent side. Do not wash your car. Uh, use common sense. Once again, follow the instructions to have the best performance. What's your take also on, uh, I know you like to apply your coatings in a circular manner. Right. I do the cross hatch up and down, left and right. I think it's a personal taste kind of thing. There's no real... You can do triangles, figure eights, squares, yeah. uh, whatever geometric shape fits your <laughs> style. Yeah. Go for it. The reason I like circles is, first of all, for your body, the less times you're starting and stopping, the easier it is on your body. Secondly, a circular motion, Mr. Miyagi had it right, you're spreading a more even layer. Uh, the cross hatching, a lot of coating manufacturers back in the beginning, again, yes were suggesting the cross hatching just to make sure the whole surface was coated. Exactly. You want even coverage. That's right. the whole purpose. Yeah. But the, the circular motion actually gives you the most even coverage because with a cross hatching, every time you stop, you have a possibility of a hot spot. Gotcha. So it's just for ease of use and, uh, you know, however you want to look at it, apply it how you want how to you apply want, it. Yeah. Just make sure you're applying that even layer. Yeah. Use an inspection light, work in a, or at least in a well-lit area and look at your work, observe your work. Yeah. Don't leave any high spots, take your time, do it right. You don't have to speed through it unless you're a detailer with many, many years, time is money. You're gonna right. get better as you apply more of them. But if you're a DIYer, imagine you're doing this once every other, every few years because coatings last that long. Yeah. So if it takes you an hour, it takes you an hour. It doesn't matter. Take the time, do it right. Don't be in a rush. Exactly. Don't be in a rush. So guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Many tips and tricks. We're going to have more with Ivan. We're filming a few videos together. So I always appreciate. Thanks for being on the Thank show, you, my friend. I highly encourage you guys go see the DIY Detail YouTube channel. Uh, give them a, a shout out from Pan, the organizer that sends you over there to see their content. Uh, also, I remind you any uh, products that we spoke about today, I'll link those in the description for you guys to check them out. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.